select a pixel layer in Affinity Photo. Once you've done that, what you can do, you can go over here to the Liquify Persona. Please check out my other videos on that. And it needs to be a pixel layer. Can't be a shape, etc. Now, in this one, I'm going to go through the brush. So here's the brush panel. You can see view and studio, and you've got brush. You can see all the various panels. It's changed from the previous persona, so you get a slightly different persona. You've also got channels. There's going to do a video on that as well. So with that brush one there, what you can do, you can modify the size. Now I'm going to go, now the size jumps up quite large. You can make it very large. It's just ridiculous. Probably easier to enter it in here. So say, set it to 500, something like that. I find that easier to use than, and then just apply it. And you can see the result of your application just with 500. But you can reduce it down. Say you want it to just work with, say, 100. So you just localize, very localized area, just like that. Apply it there. That's what that size is, just very small. Also, let's just increase that. Now, here you've got hardness. With this, what you can do, you can reduce the hardness down to zero and you can apply it and you can see the result. And this is the, the one I'm using here is this one, turbulence. So I'm just using turbulence there. You can use any, obviously, any of these other ones, twirls, etc. But do that, and you'll notice you get a result of just subtle changes with hardness. If you push it up to 100% and then apply it, you can see the result is really very much, much more intense. So say I go and select a different brush. Let's just go and select another one. And I'm going to go through the brushes in a sec. But I'm just quickly showing the difference with hardness. So put it down to zero and just apply. You can see it's nicely smooth. Set it to hardness, maximum, and then apply it. And there's a lot more rippling. You can see the effect. There's lots of ripples there. So it does create a sort of a different effect. Put that back. Undo. You can do undo, control Z, command Z, etc. Now, what you've also got is opacity. And opacity is great. So you can put it down to zero, and it literally freezes it. You can't move anything. So 0% is a useless setting in many ways. It just doesn't do anything. So if you don't want any, but if you want a very subtle change, say you like you want an area, but you don't want to do it very quickly. So just drag and it will just do very subtle changes with a low opacity. Set it to 100% and then do a little bit of drag. It does a lot more. So you can see it rapidly does it. It moves around much quicker. There's no drag to it, but that's what it is. It drag, gives a drag. It should be more drag, I think, than opacity. Undo again. And it can be the same with any other tool. But some of the tools, you can see it better with other tools than others. So again, with this one, you go twirl, say, and I'm going to go with the speed. Now, you can put the speed down to 1%. Now, obviously, it's not going at 1%. I don't know what that particularly means, 1%, but it still goes move slowly. And undo again. You put the speed up to 100%, and you can see it goes very rapidly, and you get a real twist. You might not want to go that fast. Maybe you want to do it more subtle. So just click, click. Just you can click it. You don't have to just sort of hold it down for a long time. That's what works. Hold it down and you can do it very rapidly. Just click, very subtle changes. But it's 100%. You may not want to be that fast. Depends how rapidly you want to change your image. Now you've also got down here, ramp. I have to say, I've been going through this quite a few times today and it's very subtle. If there's any differences, maybe some of the tools work differently. I'm really not certain. Most obvious suspect, I would say, is turbulence, and you go with sigmoid, and you can apply that, and maybe the, the, the result is different. You'd have to be a better man than I am to work out the mathematics of that, to see if one is a cosine or sigmoid. I don't know. But I guess there must be very, you've just got to try it. If you're happy with some one of these settings, Personally, I wish the availability of this was even more. A longer list of ones that are really noticeably sort of like square one that actually seems to generate squares. This doesn't generate a square. Now, that would be really cool. However, but that feature is there. So, right, we've got the brush. Now, I'm just going to go with these settings, 100%, 100%, whatever. So, you can just see the result of these things. Now, you've got the standard tools over here. You've got here... Handle, which means you could just move things around, which is nice. You've got the zoom, so you can zoom into a particular area of work. Say, if you want to just concentrate on this bit, you can zoom in on that. Now you've got this. 
And this one is the, this one's a push forward tool. And it's quite nice. It's basic, the basic one, the default one that I think most people probably use, but you can what you do just drag. Now with 100%, you can see there's a lot of rippling. You might not want that, but you can change that by changing the hardness down. And you can just move it and you can see the result of it. And it goes in the direction that you drag your mouse. It's a pity there's no reverse feature. There isn't. It'd be nice if there was, so it would go the other way. However, weirdly, this next tool, this one is one of the weirdest ones because I think it's named slightly odd, push left. If you click there and you go left, it goes up. If you go down, it goes up. It's a bit odd, but you can see the general result. It's basically doing the same as push forward, but just 90 degrees. Just strange. I think it's not, the name is slightly odd, but anyway, it does work, does do something. Maybe it does create something slightly different. But personally, it looks like much the same sort of sort of warping. However, you've also got this one, which is great, which is the twirl, liquefied twirl tool. And you can hold that down. And again, you can move it. You can move it across and warp it like that. Or just click and hold. And you can then warp that. And you can create all kinds of warping of that thing. You can create some crazy meshes, which you can save. You can go over here in the mesh panel and you can save it. There's a load and save. I like the ripple. Ripple features are very nice. And I always like to sort of just go there and just ripple in a certain area like that. However, I think the mesh does seem to be a bit odd. However, what you can also do, this one, pinch. So pinch, pinch is more actually a blow or a punch. It's called punch in here. But why the pinch spans it out, I do not know. Personally, I think that's a slight odd feature, bug maybe I would suggest. However, it does have, oh, with the twirl, you can also hold down the ultra option key and it will do it in the opposite direction. And you can do the same with this, with the pinch. That's why I just suddenly remembered it. You can get, hold down the ultra option key and it will do what you think it should do, which is there. That one there, sorry, that one there, I should say. So you've got that one, bloats it, pinch, hold down the ultra option and it does the pinch. Why it should be with the alt, I do not know, ultra option. Very strange. Then you've got the same tool underneath, basically. You've got this one, which is considered the punch tool, which actually does a pinch. Unless you hold down the alter option key where it does a punch. Very strange. For me, my favorite one is this one. Well, actually, both these two are the best ones at the bottom. And I think they're really great, the turbulence. I would love to see more features in the turbulence because I think turbulence is great, but it would be great if there was like infinitely more variations on this. However, just apply it. And again, you can hold it down, just hold it down. Always ends up looking like a map of Europe to my eyes, or certainly some very unusual sort of land masses, maybe Norwegian coastline or something. You want a sort of fractal, sort of unusual sort of lines there. And you can see the design there. It's quite nice. And you can apply it obviously in different parts. And you can see as you do that, just makes a very nice turbulent design. And that, of course, be undone again, undo. Now, there's no other options. You've got to just drag or hold, as it says there, and that's it. And you can see the mesh. The mesh is sort of distorted in all kinds of ways, but it would be great if there were sort of ones where it could do it outside like Zoom. A Zoom one, a Zoom feature would be cool. There's actually about 50 tools I could think of here. A Zoom would be brilliant, sort of a rapid sort of speed one. A spiral one would be superb, you know, so it makes it into a spiral design, so it distorts it that way. You can literally think of about 50 different liquify options here, tools. Maybe one day they will be added. However, undo. What you can also do is you've got this one. And this one, the mesh. Well, actually, I'm just going to leave that because what you need with this is something to actually show. And then you can see that now, that sort of mesh there. And you can go down here. Weirdly, it's a globe. Don't know why. But however, mesh clone. So click that. And now hold down the alter option key. Because what you need to do is, I'm going to say that. Let's just put there. And you can see. You can see that there. That little plus. That's the center point for that clone. So that's where it's going to work from. So if I go somewhere else and then apply it, and I can see now what was over there is now applied over here, which is nice. So again, I can just go over somewhere else. 
and you can reduce the size. Let's reduce the size a bit and just apply it like that. And you can see as you do that, it's applied exactly the same. I guess if you apply it, it will not go any further because it's just using this as the clone. And you can vary it, of course. You can go over here and click it in, and you can see now you've got the plus over there, though it does have a tendency to put the same thing, which is not very helpful. But hold down the ultra option key and click there. Oh, that's it. You've got to do the ultra option key and then click. If you do it the other way around, it will generate this design, which is not probably what you want. But there's nothing there, of course, other than straight grid. But of course, then you can just go over here and apply it and then put it back. So that's quite nice to reconstruct using that. And again, you can do that again over there and you can see the effect. So this liquify one clone, really nice little feature. Again, it does require some actual initial sort of manipulation over there and then go to this and apply it. Depending on the size of brush, you can apply it different areas. Just hold down the ultra option key and click and just add that there and then apply it over there. And it's great because you can just apply it there, apply it there. It's a sort of like mirror effect in many ways. So you create it there, you can then create it all the way around. Now that would be another great feature, a mirror option within this as well. That would be pretty cool as well. So it could be applied all the way around so they all go out at the same. Okay, so that's it. Well, the bottom one here is slightly different and I've gone through that in the first video in the series, which is the reconstruct. And the reconstruct is you can click there and it just basically puts it back to fresh, completely reconstructed straight lines, which is perfectly reasonable. These ones I'm going to do in the next video, which is the mask. And you can see the mask over here, but that's going to be the next one. So that's it, running through the brushes. Of course, you can apply. And once you've done it, once you're happy with it, you've got this design, you've changed it. Key thing, remember to click apply. You can always cancel it, but you always click apply. And there you've got your lovely mesh design there. And of course, what you can always do is you can always go up here. Now, filters, repeat, liquefy. It's very odd, stuck there, but that's, I suppose, as good as place as anything. So you can repeat it. Key thing to remember. So repeat, liquefy. And you can see, repeat it again, repeat. I mean, it's not a filter, but for some weird reason, it's stuck there. Very strange. Unfortunately, there's no sort of liquefy live filter layer. That would be kind of cool. But it's actually quite a nice effect doing the repeat liquefy. You can actually see what happens. It becomes more sort of like a, an oil painting. Creates a sort of like smeary oil painting effect. You can see the result of the light sort of there, all the sort of things. So the repeat feature should not be ignored for this. You know, you can actually use it to really interesting advantage. And again, of course, once you've got this, of course, you can always duplicate it, hold down the ultra option key, resize that, Create another one there and just create some more. I'm holding down the ultra option key to duplicate this design. And of course, what you do, you can repeat liquefy, which can be applied to that. And you can see the result. You can create a variety of different designs. And of course, what you can also do, just go and create another shape. And I'm just gonna create a very quick shape like that. However, you can't use it now. But what you can do, of course, is you can again rasterize it. So rasterize it and then go to filters, repeat liquefy. And you can see then it's applied to that. So you can create a variety of different sort of unusual designs just by using the repeat feature. And you can see it there. Very, very nice. And of course, it's just a layer. So if you want to, you can always bring up View, Studio and Layers. With Layers, you can then go down to the bottom, Effects. And you can say, click Outer Shadow and click 3D and create a nice, 3D like paint effect, very quickly close. And you've got your design there. And of course, you can always repeat liquefy on that as well to create even more unusual designs. And repeat that, of course, hold down the all drop option key and duplicate that. And that's all from this persona up here, the liquefy persona. But also, even more, you should be able to do that. But weirdly, the fade is not there. So it's not a true filter. Which is a pity, really. Now, that would have been even more amazing. But, of course, it does lead to this. You can, of course, use blending modes. So, as well as liquefy, the result of that liquefy can be used with colour burn or difference and so on and so on. So, you can create all kinds of really unique designs like that that can be then filter, repeat liquefy and so on and so on.
No, to be honest, I'm not certain it's actually doing anything more further, but you certainly it's done a fair amount. Great, some very interesting designs. Hope you found this of interest. I'm going to be doing another one on the masking, masking feature, which I'm certain I'll find some other things with that as well. Thank you much.